All of the information about Prince 2 that I've shared with you so far has consistently used a colour scheme that differentiates each process and stage in a Prince 2 project. Everything we have covered together so far and everything we will cover in the rest of the course materials follows the same scheme. It's based on the concept of stages carried out by using defined processes. It's crucial to understand the concept of stage and to realise the differentiation from process. A PRINCE2 project starts with the starting up a project process that prepares us to answer the question, does the idea or opportunity or threat that might trigger a project look important enough to spend time and effort to properly understand it? The manual says that it's not a stage and that it's before a project starts. That it is not a stage is a distinction that's irrelevant in the real world, but now you know it, it has the potential to be the source of a few marks for you. The worth the cost of a closer look decision is made in activity authorised initiation, which is the first activity within the process of directing a project, or DP for short in the exam syllabus references. The DP process is described in chapter 13 of the manual. In fact, the PRINCE2 processes are described in chapters 12 through 18. Those chapters sections 1, 2, 3 and 4 are the process's purpose, objectives, context and then each of its activities. So authorised initiation, which is the first activity of the DP process, is manual reference 1341 or DP1 for short. We will talk soon about what SU does but for now note that it creates a detailed plan for the initiation stage and we'll talk soon about what the initiation stage does but for now note that it creates a forward-looking project plan which is less detailed the further into the future we go and it brings us up to the decision points DP2 and DP3. The initiation stage is conducted by following the activities of the initiating a project process and the managing stage boundaries process. Between them, they prepare the information to support the decisions at 13.4.2 and 3. 13.4.2 is called in full, authorising a project. There is more that we need to cover in order to understand what these DP and other processes and their activities are doing. But if the initiation stages results are favourable, then the project is executed in one or more delivery stages during which team members with specialist subject matter expertise carry out the technical work required to create the project's outputs under control of the managing product delivery process. Managing product delivery has three activities which interface or interact with the controlling a stage processes being used by the project manager. As we near the end of a stage then the stage is either ended with managing stage boundaries, the chapter 17 activities, and that will happen for every stage that has another stage following it. But eventually we get to the last stage. And when we get to the last stage, then that stage closes by the preparing, planned or unplanned closure and is authorised by the authorised project closure process, DP5. Let's just summarise that again. Print has seven processes, of which the first is starting up a project, and it's freestanding on its own. All the other processes make up the content of stages, and a project always has at least two stages. Stages are management divisions of the project, the first of which creates the project plan and is the initiation stage, and all the subsequent ones are delivery stages. Every stage except the last stage closes with the managing the stage boundary process set of activities. The last stage closes with the closing a project activities. Two things I should add before we move on. If the initiation stage is sufficiently demanding, then its work can be managed using the controlling a stage and managing product delivery processes. And second, don't worry about all of these initials. They will become familiar as we go.